Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Code with Ease by Varsha. So today we are going to solve this lead code medium question, Merge Intervals. So let's take a look at the problem statement. We are given an array intervals where intervals of i consist of the start and the end values and we need to merge all overlapping intervals and return an array of the non-overlapping intervals that covers all the intervals. Okay, so if you take a look at this example, it's like we are given an array of arrays or a 2D array. So all of them in each array, the start and the end, there are two indices, so zero indices so the first index represents the start index and the last index is the end index. So like that we are given the intervals. So among all the arrays which is given to us, we have to return another array as an output in which the intervals are getting merged. The overlapping intervals are getting merged. What is meant by overlapping intervals? Like for example, 1 and 3. It starts from 1 and 3. We see the next array is 2 and 6. So we know that 1 and 3 and 2 and 6 are overlapping because 2 falls within this range from 1 to 3 2 falls within this so like that is what i said like these intervals overlap that is why we can merge them together to make it 1 6 such that we are making it like a continuous interval whereas if we see these two arrays like 2 6 and 8 10 there is no overlap because 2 to 6 is one set 2 to 6 is one boundary and 8 to 10 is another boundary so there is no overlap in between so they are independent arrays so what we have to do is in this way we will be given a 2d array where individual arrays will be there we have to identify firstly which is the overlapping interval or the overlapping array and then we have to manipulate the start and the end indices and then return an array of the final arrays Similarly, if we take a look at the second example 1 4 and 4 and 5 so we see that this the end index of this array and the start index of this array is actually same so what are the conditions that intervals can be overlapping either the last index the end index of one array is equal to the beginning index of the next array the or it can be that the beginning index of the next array is falling within this range of the previous array that it is like it is it was like over here so this simply means that the end index of this array can be greater than or equal to the beginning index of the next array that's it if it is greater than and equal to like we have 3 and 2 or 4 and 4 then we can consider those two intervals to be overlapping and we have to manipulate the start and the end pointers. So with that being said, now let's see what can be the approach for solving this. So here we take the intervals that we have. So over here there is no mention whether this uh, matrix is going to be sorted or unsorted. So we have to consider that scenario also. If that has to be sorted or not. If you notice, as we discussed, what is the identifying criteria for overlap? The overlap is going to happen if and only if the current end, that value, the current end, current, when I say current, the current value means suppose the current is over here and this is the next. So we are comparing these two. So if the current end is greater than or equal to next begin, like 3 is greater than or equal to 2. So only in this case it is eligible to be an overlap. So this is how we are going to check for every interval, the current intervals ending and the next intervals beginning index. So when we are doing this, we have to be rest assured that every index, the starting index of every interval is in a sorted order. Like we can see here 1, 2, 8, 15. It is in a sorting uh, order. But if it was not sorted, like if it was something like 2, 6 and then we had 15 and 18 here and then somewhere we had 1 and 3. If it was all shuffled like this, where the starting index is clearly not sorted. In that case, it is difficult for us to determine if they are overlapping or not because Let's say if you are comparing these two, 6 is not greater than or equal to 15. So, okay, 2 and 6 and 15 and 18 are not related. They are not overlapping, which is okay. But if you notice 1 and 3, 1 and 3 and 2 and 6, we can see that these two can be merged together. Because what is the reason as we told? 2 falls within this range. So, we can merge this two. Like we told that 3 is greater than or equal to. So, our condition, whatever we have written, this is getting violated whenever there is not sorted that is why the first thing is we need to sort it so we are going to sort it how we are going to sort based on the beginning index all of that we'll see later so first thing we have to understand is we need to sort it with reference to the beginning index with reference to the begin index so that is done so we have sorted now when we are sorting obviously our time complexity is n log n so that also we have to factor in okay next what we have to do we have to return a mat matrix only so we we don't know right now what the size of this could be because we don't know what at all can overlap and all of that so we'll take a dynamic data structure so we'll take a list so into the list we are going to first input the current array that we have 
So ARR of 0, we are going to add this to the list. That is 1 and 3 is now at the list. And let's say we call this as current. So far, so good. Now we have a for loop, which we are going to iterate through the matrix which we have. So within this for loop, we have to write the logic. So of course, this condition will be there. But before that, we have to take into account the current ending, the current beginning, the current end, all of that we are going to take into account. And since it's a for loop, we also have to take into account the next beginning index value and the next ending index. So all of that we have taken. Then we write this condition within this, whether CE is greater than or equal to next or begin. If this is true, if this is true, then what is going to happen? This current is already holding in, inside this list, which we are eventually going to return. This is anyway uh, going to hold the values, which is 1 and 3. If my condition is true, what I, why I, what I have to do? My starting index is still going to be the same because we have already sorted all the arrays. So 1 will still remain the same. What has to change is this value, the in, ending index value. When I have to merge two intervals, the ending index value has to change. And what is this value going to be? It is going to be the maximum of the current ending that we have, CE and the next end. Uh, next end the maximum of 3 and 6 whatever is that going to be that is what we are going to update in this list in this in this list when i say in this list i mean there is an entry in the list which is done with the uh, reference variable of current so 1 and 3 so that we have to update so in this case 1 and 3 and 2 and 6 so what is the maximum 6 is maximum because 3 it is greater than 3 so 1 and 3 will get changed and now we are going to make it 1 and 6 so i'll write it like now the list instead of containing 1 and 3 it is containing 1 and 6. So now the list, the value in the list gets updated. The current is now storing 1 and 6. Okay. Now we move ahead. So now we come to this array 8 and 10. Current is 1 and 6. For loop since we have moved ahead, now we are at this. So let's say we are at this row 8 and 10. Now what is the check going to be? Same thing we are going to take into account current end, current beginning The uh, for the next, not row, uh, it is next. So next starting, next uh, next begin, next end and all of that we are going to take. Same check we are going to run whether now 6 is greater than or equal to 8. It is not clearly. So now this comes to the else part. So far we were thinking, okay, this condition is true. What all we are going to do? Next, if it is false, means it comes to the else block. What are we going to do? We see that current is 1 and 6. Next is 8 and 10. Two are separate distinct intervals. No overlap is there, hence we don't have to merge it. If we don't have to merge it, my list is still going to contain 1 and 6. But 8 and 10 also needs to be added to the list. Okay, So I have to add 8 and 10 because it is an independent interval. And I have to, at the end, what I have to return? I have to return an array of non-overlapping intervals. So 1 and 6 and 8 and 10 are non-overlapping. 8 and 10 needs to be added. So what I will do, my current will now change from this to this. Because now my point of reference has shifted from 1 to 6 to 8 to 10 because I have got another independent non-overlapping interval that is 8 and 10. So current will shift over here. The reference variable will now point to this array instead of 1 and 6. And then I am going to add whatever this value was 8 and 10. The next I am going to add over here. So 8 and 10 is now added to my list. Done. Now the for loop again moves ahead. So now for loops, now the for loop moves ahead. So the next is shifted to here. My current is now 8 and 10. Same check happens. 10 is being compared with 15. 10 is not greater than or equal to 15. So again, 15 and 18 is an independent interval. So that gets added. And of course, current shifts to 15 and 18. So this becomes current. Now for loop moves ahead and we have anyway reached the end of the matrix. So we are done with this. So, and this is what we are going to return at the end, which consists of 1, 6, 8, 10 and 15, 18. Same as this result. So this is the approach plus the dry run. We have clubbed both of that uh, together. So the basic idea over here is in order to identify how to identify whether intervals are overlapping. And if they are overlapping, what are the next further steps that we have to take? That is all about this. Now let's write the code for this. Okay, so now we are going to start with the code. So the first thing that we are going to do as we discussed is we are going to sort this array. And we are going to sort this array on the basis of the begin index. So we'll use this built-in method arrays.sort. The first parameter is going to be the array which you want to sort. So when we are going to use uh, a custom sorting approach, we use something called a comparator. 
the shorthand that we use. So we want to compare with reference to the begin index. So what we will do, let's say we'll put these two variables as if we are comparing array one and two, because we are comparing all the one D arrays, right, internally. And then we use the lambda expression. So within this, what we are doing, we are going to compare this and then based on the begin index. So ARR one zero minus ARR two of zero. So when I say zero, it is obviously going to be the start of the begin index. So on the basis of this, the comparison is going to happen and then it will be sorted accordingly in ascending order. Okay, so if you guys want me to make detailed video on comparator, comparable, how the custom sorting works and all of that, do let me know in the comments. Okay, so moving ahead with this, next thing is we need to define the list which we are going to return. Uh, we are not going to return the list, we are going to return a 2D array only, but as of now, let's take a list. Next thing is, into the list, we first are going to add the first 1D array. So we are also going to define that using the current, uh, like we discussed. So the first 1D array, when I say it is intervals of zero, that is going to be the first point of reference. And the same thing, we are going to add it to our list also. Next, we'll start with the for loop. So we'll write a for each loop. Since we are iterating through every 1D array, so we're going to say for every row. In this, we are going to take, first of all, the current end, which is going to be current at the 1th index. Then we are going to take int next begin, the first index of the next interval. And finally, we are also going to take the next end, which is interval of 1. Then we are going to run the if condition that if current end is greater than or equal to next begin, if this is true, like we discussed, we are going to update the ending of this, this current. So current of 1, we are going to update it to the maximum of the current end that we already have, or is it going to be next end, whichever is maximum that is going to be updated, like we discussed for 1 and 6. 3 and 6 will be compared, whatever is greater will be updated in the current end. So that is being done for, otherwise what we will do, current will now point to the next interval and we are going to add that to our list, whatever the new independent non-overlapping interval we got, we are going to add that to, other, to our list, so output dot add current. Now from here onwards, the point of reference has shifted to the next, the next interval and then again the for loop is going to run as usual. Now here comes the fun part. Now that we have everything into this list outside of this for loop, now we have to convert or we have to print, uh, we have to return the 2D array instead of the list. So how are we going to return that? So return, we are going to take this output list that we have, dot to array we are going to call and within this, we are going to say, do a new int, means form a new object which is going to be of the size of the list, that's it. So with that, now let's run this. So this is the 1D array. So my bad, we are going to create a list of all the 1D arrays. Okay, I missed the bracket here. Okay, finally, it was accepted. Okay, cool. So that is all about the code for this. So to sum it up, let's talk about the time complexity also. We are doing a sorting, so that is n log n. We are doing this in one traversal, so that is order of n. So n log n plus order of n. That is the overall time complexity that we have achieved. So with that, I hope you guys have understood what is the idea behind this question. And you can also let me know in the comments if you have any other suggestions on other lead code problems that you would want us to solve. And do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And press the bell icon next to the subscribe button to receive the notification. And thank you so much for watching.